Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. So this Sunday is a special Sunday. It is Palm Sunday and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But right now we're going to talk about the Beatitude, Matthew 5 verse 9 and it says, Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called the children of God. Well, what exactly is a peacemaker? Somebody who makes peace, right? But what does peace actually mean? It means calm. It means getting along, not fighting. When a country is in a time of peace, it means it's not at war with other countries. A lake that is smooth and calm with no ripples or splashes in the water is peaceful. Sometimes your mom may ask you and your brothers and sisters to calm down and stop fighting so she can have some peace. She wants you all to get along. So a peacemaker is someone who helps everyone to get along without fighting. In the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Who are they talking about? They're talking about Jesus. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the Son of God. And when we follow Jesus by making peace, we're showing that we are children of God, just like Jesus is. Like I said, this Sunday is Palm Sunday, and it's the week before Easter. Do you remember what happened on Palm Sunday? Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and everyone cheered him, and they loved him. They were sure he was the one coming to save them and to give them peace from all the people that were hurting them. He did give them peace, but not the kind that they were expecting. He came to bring them peace in their hearts, not necessarily peace with the government or the people around them. Let's take a little look at some other verses in the Bible. In Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31, Jesus is saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and your strength. And the second is, Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. So Jesus was telling the people to love the Lord first and then to love their neighbors. And that includes people that were hurting them. So what does that mean for us? Well, first of all, who's your neighbor? Does that mean just the people who live next door? No, it means the people in your town, your country, your province. It means the people in your church, in your school, and the list goes on. This commandment, love your neighbor as yourself, is also recorded in the Bible in Luke 10. And there's a great story that Jesus told as an example of loving your neighbor. A Jewish man was traveling down the road, and he was beaten up. He was robbed and left to die on the side of the road. Now a Jewish priest came along, saw him, and kept on going. Then a Levite, who's a Jewish teacher priest, came and saw the man. He kept on going as well. Next, a Samaritan man came. Now Samaritans were sworn enemies of the Jewish people. He came walking down the road. He saw the man and he instantly ran over to help him. He looked after the man's injuries and then he took him to a safe place so the man could recuperate. Jesus said this Samaritan man was a true neighbor. He was an example of peacemaking because Samaritans and Jews were sworn enemies, but he had mercy on the man and he helped him. We talked about mercy a few weeks ago, and I put it in here because I want you to understand how all of these Beatitudes are building on each other. When we're merciful, we are working to have pure hearts before God, and we aren't distracted by things of this world. It's easier to be a peacemaker when we focus on God rather than what the rest of the world's idea of who we should like and who we should call an enemy. Children of God want to bring everyone together and bring everyone to God. So how do we do that? Well, remember the story of Johnny last week? He was so mean to everyone. What did his friend Penny do? 
She showed him kindness and mercy, and she showed him how to have peace. She showed him that to have that peace, we need to ask Jesus to help us. Just so you know, when you do these things, when you ask Jesus to be with you all the time, and you become children of God, there's going to be people who don't like you for that very reason. So what do you do? Do you yell at them? Do you tell them they're wrong? Do you be mean to them? No. In Romans chapter 12, verse 8, it says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You know, you can't make everyone happy. Sometimes people will just want to fight. But don't give in. When this happens, practice the Beatitudes. We're going to talk more about people not liking us because of Jesus next week. So what are some of the ways that we can become peacemakers? We can show kindness to the school bully. We can become friends with a new kid at school. We can not talk back to our parents. And we can play nicely with our brothers and sisters. You know, there's two parts to being a peacemaker. One, we're at peace with God when we know that Jesus died for our sins and when we ask him to be in charge of our lives and do our best to follow him. And two, we are at peace with other people when we do everything we can to get along with them. And you know what? When we're at peace with people who don't follow Jesus, they will start to see that there's something different about us. And they may even start to follow Jesus as well. So this week... I hope you will practice your peacemaking skills. Ask Jesus to help you. Now this week is going to be a busy one. I have a couple of crafts for you this week. I have the first one, which is called Fishing for Peace. It's the cross. We have magnets attached on the back. And these little bees, they're attracted to the peace of Jesus. Okay, so you're going to be getting all of this. Make sure you color them. I didn't have time. So make sure that you color them and glue them together, and then you can try that out and see how it works. The other one that we're doing is we're going to make our palm branch because it's Palm Sunday next uh, on the 28th of this Sunday. So I've got the palm leaf. There's the branch. I've included a, a straw in it, and you can glue that on, and that'll just make it that much stronger, okay? So you can wave your palm leaf around. Now, the other one is, is your beehive. I hope you've been working on it. I'm looking forward to seeing it all completed when we're done. So, let's take a moment and let's just pray. Let's just close our eyes. Dear God, I want to be one of your children. I want to be a peacemaker like Jesus. I pray for Jesus to take over my life and show me how to have the peace that can only come from you. Thank you for all you have done for us. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it for today. I'm excited to see all your crafts and to see how you're doing with them. Don't forget. Where did my mask go? Oh, don't forget. Don't lose your mask. Make sure you wear it, okay? And see, our teddy still got his on. He's, he's being very careful. And don't forget to wash your hands, okay? You have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next Sunday.